Affirm it's connecting to cloud server. I'm not sure what. Yeah, okay. I think we are in now. May I begin? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for being so patient with me. Uh, uh, Vaidehi, congratulations. I just loved your lecture. And I took de delight in every slide. It was wonderful. Thank you, thank so, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, the, the topic for today is maternity squad building protocol driven team practice. This is one of my favorite pictures because you can't tell the difference between the obstetricians and the midwives in this picture. That is an absolute team uh, here. And this is a, a workshop that we run called Moms where we ask participants to come or hospitals to send a nurse and a doctor together. So the idea is that we break down hierarchy because when you have an emergency, for example, uh, it doesn't matter who reaches there first. It could be a junior nurse, it could be a senior person, but that first person needs to know exactly what to do and take charge and begin the response to the emergency. Uh, with this background, let me go on to why do we need to build teams? But before we go on, I must uh, share with you, uh, when I had gone to England, I spent 13 months uh, to get my membership. And I have to confess, I didn't learn much OBGY. All that I learned was here in India, and I continue to learn that. But what I learned was far more than OBGY. I learned the importance of teams. I learned the importance of communication, uh, putting a plan of action, uh, respecting each person, giving them the dignity, uh, accepting strengths of people. And that was what I brought back with me. So when I took over from my parents, I knew that there was something I could never do alone. I had to build a team. Now, this is a definition I came across several years ago, and I've not had any reason to change it. It says, um, oh no, no, we're not moving. Mo, anything I can do now? Okay. Find some people who believe in and share your vision. Now, that's me in 89. I took over from my parents in 85. And that's the time when I weighed about 89 or 90 kgs. Today, I'm 63. Uh, this is Kasturi, who's walked with us for a year before I took over and continues to walk with us. This is Dr. Geeta, who joined us after her MD and uh, is, uh, is with us still. And Dr. Shashi, who heads our the senior most in laparoscopic surgery. She's a true gynecologist. So you need to find people who believe in and share your vision. People whom you can trust. And I can trust these ladies with my whole life. And who are going to be achievers in their own field. Geeta's turned into a wonderful perinatologist, um, has done tremendous work in fetal medicine. In fact, she's the director of fetal medicine today. Chashi is the senior most and is mentoring all the young surgeons in laparoscopic surgery. Kasturi, uh, we call her the Rock of Gibraltar. She's got the largest fan following in terms of patients, in terms of staff, and she's the human face between management and all the rest of the employees. And then grow old together. And I think if this is what you've enjoyed, uh, there couldn't be a bigger blessing. We've got two cancer survivors here. We've got two very young widows. Uh, Shashi and Geeta lost their husbands within four years of marriage. Uh, we've shared each other's sorrows and joys. And the children of these three ma uh, colleagues uh, formed a second ring, and some of them have gone on to birth. Obstetric care, my dear friends, is a team activity. Uh, my parents' generation and some of us today still continue to operate solo. But today we know that's more and more difficult. And you really need to have a group of colleagues to work with. When they looked into adverse events, a paper said 
that 70% of the Sentinel events happened because the team did not work very well and communication was dysfunctional. So to be effective, efficient, and safe, you really require a good team. And again, the ACOG committee opinion in 2014 stressed on the importance of teamwork and communication. Now, when I got the request from Dr. Vaidehi, I sat down and began to think. And what I did was I just put a question into our WhatsApp group of 25, in fact, with 28 consultants, OBGY. And I said, hey, listen, what are your views about the way we practice? Tell me, you know, are there advantages, disadvantages? Because then I would be able to share your feedback with the audience. So this has come from a group of colleagues who are with us, say, from about four years to 28 years. Protocol-based approach, somebody said, it aims for standardized care, and you're able to handle any clinical scenario. Another colleague said there's uniformity in care, and so you reduce your errors because everybody is following a common protocol. If they are evidence-based, and we are writing our protocols based on evidence, and we update it periodically, the minute there is a change in a protocol or a guideline, then a small group of us gets together and updates the version. Very useful, particularly when you have new doctors. Now, because we, we are indulging in national board training, we have uh, residents coming in every year. And we also have young registrars joining us. So when you have protocols, it makes it so easy for the youngsters to fall into line and follow something that's there and carved in stone. Sometimes, of course, the protocols may not work. And that's fine because your clinical experience or your judgment, uh, we don't know that particular medical condition may need deviation from the protocol and that's acceptable. What is important is that you document why you chose another route. Protocols demand teamwork and most importantly, when I began to put my team together, the, one of the first lessons I learned as a leader was to let go of your ego and to let the light shine. Ma'am, you got muted. Okay. Um, and the first thing in a team is you need to let go of your own ego and work more in terms of the focus. You know, what is our objective? Our objective is safe care and the patient has to go home in, in, a, in a fit condition. So that's extremely important that we let go of our egos. First of all, let practice gives a lot of comfort to doctors, but more importantly to patients, because all of you are singing from the same songbook. You're all speaking the same language. So when a mother comes in and finds a second doctor she's never seen before, she doesn't get too perturbed because we are all following a uniform protocol and not dependent on whims and fancies of individuals. Another doctor gave me a different perspective. She says the team gets recognition when we follow protocols. So that's, that's a whole different way of looking at it. And it helps reduce patient harm and obviously outcomes are far better. Now, this is on possible, a colleague said, when the protocol is evidence-based. And therefore, when we assign people to write a protocol or to review a protocol, we also expect them to look at the evidence. Errors are minimized because one is not dependent on memory. You have something written there, you don't have to worry about you know, remembering everything, it's all on the desktop or in a book on the cup on the table. So very easy to move and do what you need to do. Let me explain what I mean by uniformity of care is equitable and woman-centered. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that we have three hospitals in Hyderabad of 100 beds each. And each hospital has a different unique strength serving different clientele. 
The flagship hospital, the original hospital in Mughalkunta, has a very large midwifery presence, and majority of our mothers are uncomplicated, low-risk mothers. So about two years ago, we converted an entire floor, the third floor, and created 10 individual birthing rooms. So the entire labor ward and birthing suite is on one floor, along with an emergency theater. Now, each individual room has access, if, if needed, to a portable uh, pool for hydrotherapy and birthing. Now, we have three levels of care, general ward, which is free, the mother doesn't pay for all the services, to the highest paying ward. But on that floor of 10 birthing rooms, the general ward mother is birthing in a separate room, individual room, and next to her, you may have the highest paying mother birthing. And this we felt is equitable and woman-centered care. And the protocols are the same. Everything is the same. Regularly updated saves us from medical legal issues. This is what another um, colleague mentioned. She says, and you know what, Dr. Evita, when we have juniors walking in, they are more confident when they communicate with mothers and couples because they watch us doing it and it's all written there, easy to follow. But most important, during emergencies and when you're working under pressure, it helps to have a team. You're not alone. Uh, when, when somebody's uh, experiencing a PPH that demands a cesarean hysterectomy, and if it, it could be a young doctor who's doing it, immediately there is help available. Nobody feels that they are working alone. And they are also, when you write guidelines or protocols for your organization, you need to base it on your own uh, environment, the limitations, and the kind of clientele that you are serving. Finally, the advantages we felt was it's the best way for shared care, easy to learn, teach, and practice. But my colleagues felt that this gave them a tremendous work-life balance because they're not on call 24 seven. They know that they can go home once the day is over and there's somebody there to care for the women who are booked under them. And I think this is one of the biggest advantages, particularly for women, working women and working mothers. We have a form that we offer to every couple when they register. I think this is important wherever you are working, to be upfront and transparent. And I've just chosen some lines to, from the form. It says, Fernandez Hospital has a panel of well-qualified and well-experienced obstetricians, gynecologists, and professional midwives. So all three are considered as colleagues and a team. When I register as a patient, I can choose to consult with any one of these healthcare professionals. So we have women today who do not see an obstetrician who take appointments with the midwives, go straight to the midwifery clinics that are run independently, register with the midwife. But when they get admitted, they are admitted under the consultant who is on call that day because the INC has not yet given midwives the freedom and the medical legal freedom to register them as inpatients. But this is upfront mother can choose. While I'm in labor and during my delivery, any member of this competent team will, at that time, provide me with full assistance and care. So she's told that she may not have the doctor of her choice, and this is how we work. And the healthcare professional will provide the obstetrician under whose care I was during my antenatal checkups with constant updates on my status. And this works very well with digital electronic medical records, because if I am the obstetrician and my mother has been admitted, I get an SMS. So I know that I have someone admitted under my care, but she's being looked after by, by the team at the moment. We also have it in different languages, so people know exactly what they're signing up for. APOC committee opinion has spoken about standardization of practice and how does one standardize, uh, standardize practice? And you do that with 
teams with protocols. When you have checklists and protocols, they just make your processes so simple and your care certainly improves. And we know that uh, this has been used in the aviation industry and also in the firefighting industry. But for any patient whose care cannot be managed, then what is important is you document why the protocol or checklist is not being followed. And, and then these are discussed uh, in a monthly, what we call a clinical risk management meeting, where we ask ourselves, could we have done this differently? What did we learn from this? And there's no blame, shame in that. Uh, how do we minimize errors? You will know yourselves when you perform a critical task in the same manner every time it minimizes errors. Last week, I was going around the third floor, uh, the floor that I was talking about, because we've got a midwifery led care unit. Five of the birthing rooms are taken care of by midwives. Obstetricians don't go across there. And there's a door that symbolizes this. So we had a visit from the government of India, uh, Ministry of Health, because we are working with the government to train nurses for midwifery across the country. And I, I heard an alarm going. Now, I'm not in clinical work anymore, so I don't go to the hospital so often. So I asked a nurse, the midwife next to me, what's that? She says, no, that's for a crash section. And of course, the obstetrician in me is already thinking, oh my God, I hope they'll be able to shift the mother and the baby, and I hope the baby's fine. While I'm also simultaneously answering questions by the team. And I was just so relieved to know that the drill worked. And you need to have those drills in between so that people know exactly what to do when that bell rings, who, who, who owns the theater, who does what, who brings the trolley, and you're able to work far better. And of course, this works when you're tired, particularly you're working through the night, and this is where you need that support of a team. Stress in a labor ward and OT is what we obstetricians face. Elimination of variation, and this has been a great help for our staff because no longer do they have to worry that Dr. Evita prefers this suture material, Dr. Kasturi wants something else, and third person wants something else for skin. No, we have a set rules for antibiotics, for suture material, for everything. So it just makes it easy for the staff. So this elimination of variation certainly improves your quality. And what we need to build up a team is that strong leadership. One person needs to take on that leadership and says, I will do this. When we built our high-risk uh, hospital in 2011, I chose the young leaders that I had mentored under me, they had all joined as registrars just after their post-graduation. And I felt over the last several years, they had gained enough confidence. So we took five of them and pitched them in the new hospital and said, you are going to lead and build the obstetric medicine department. We are here to support you. And today they're all flying very high. I'm sure you've met some of them, Nusa, Tara, Anisha, you know, you've got to empower your colleagues, trust them. I always look at young leaders that you are putting with into the spotlight as our trapeze artists in the circus. And we older people should be the safety net. If they miss their step, they fall, we are there to catch them and then put them back on track. That's how I believe mentorship works and the baton then can be passed on and you kind of recede into the background. And adverse events occur when the team is not in sync and we haven't trained them in each of their roles in, in, in a proper manner. Also, you'll, you'll find when you have protocol-led practice and everybody's following it, at least majority are following it, you're able to audit your work. And that is amazing because this, is, this has helped us tremendously because now there's not much variation 
So then we know why is it when the protocol is working for this particular hospital here, and why is it that this particular unit has a higher um, incidence of, let's say, PPH, or a higher incidence of uh, horses, and not many people are using the vacuum? Why is it that this particular unit is not using a scalp uh, pH? You know, why is the sample so low? So you're able to then train and pick up the areas that need improvement. It's extremely important that we get involved in writing our protocols. You know, even if you have to assign one or two people, give them the support, but somebody must take on that onus for the, for the larger good of the, of the organization. And always remember, when you're writing these guidelines, you have to be inclusive. Uh, collaborative, because particularly if you're writing uh, guidelines or protocols for, for high-risk pregnancy, you know, you know that for hypertension, it's this, for diabetes, it's this, for collagen disorders. And so even the juniors find it so easy when they see a woman walk into the antenatal clinic, they very quickly refer. And, you know, we are extremely fortunate to have youngsters who are also computer savvy. Uh, Nuzak, who was heading obstetric services for Fernandez for the last 10 years, uh, is crazy uh, about being meticulous and loves electronic medical records. So she's made life easy for a lot for all of us. The minute you have a certain problem, you click and the entire protocol comes down. So you don't miss anything in following up mothers. It sort of standardizes care across the hospital. So just remember when you're writing protocols, think of all the people who need to be involved in that. Finally, when you have protocols, checklists, and you've succeeded in standardizing your care, you know for sure the quality definitely improves. Your care improves. The variation is less. And finally, it's the most cost effective way of doing things. And you can sleep better because you know that your colleagues are handling the show and you don't have to be on call 24 seven. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share our journey with you. Thank you. Over to you, Chairpersons. Dr. Avita, it was indeed a joy to listen to you. You are a true leader with a beautiful mind and heart. You have stressed how important protocols are and how we should go about it to save ourselves and our patients well in every way. I would request my co-person, uh, Dr. to please add a few things that she would like to. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am. Avita, ma'am, that was a crystal clear presentation of how successful a person can be. Definitely teamwork and commitment are the cornerstone for building up a successful entity. Uh, whatever you have said is very true and uh, we as gynecologists should learn so many things about you. So many things from you, from your presentations. Teamwork is always and always the need of the hour. Lot many medical accidents can be prevented, medical legal activities, uh, whatever cases are uh, seen on many gynecologists can be avoided because of this. So your presentation was a fantastic one. We hope that we take many take home messages from your uh, talk and see to it that we too have a good team building, a team practice and be a successful one. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say hi to Abita. I don't know whether you remember me. Of course. Hi, Ajay. How are you? It was 22 years ago. Oh, my gosh. We go when I first met way. you. Yeah. And it's an absolute yeah. pleasure and honor to meet you. It's wonderful to see uh, that um, you're inspiring us to become mentors now because I'm coming to that side of the age now. Oh. You know, where, <laughs> where you got to start becoming a mentor rather than a mentee. Right. So um, it was lovely to hear your talk. I'm really sorry I missed it because my flight was delayed a little bit, mm -hmm. but I got the last half of it and uh, just wanted Thank to you. send my regards to you. 
Thank, thank you. you, Ajay. Lovely meeting you. Thank you, Vaidehi. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Just one word. A big, big thanks from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank, thank you so you much. for giving me the opportunity. Our thanks, honor, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Bye. So thank you, chairpersons. Am I audible now? Yes. Oh. Yes, clear. So thank you, chairpersons, and thank you, Dr. Fernandez, for that phenomenal overview. It goes without saying that this change is rather going to be our comfort zone for the future. Uh, we now move on to our next session. And uh, for the session, I invite uh, Dr. Lakshmi Shri. Naam hi kafi hai. Madam, to introduction ki zarurat hi nahi hai.